Okay, in this last video on our game state program, um, we're going to look at uh, a way just uh, to clean things up a little bit. Um, it's not necessary to do this. I just want to show you another uh, another option that you have uh, that we haven't looked at before. Um, we haven't really done much with Boolean variables uh, yet this term. Um, and we also have always declared our variables up at the top of the program and uh, most of the time that's what we'll be doing but you can also declare variables where you need them uh, if you don't need them throughout the program uh, now in most of the things that we've been declaring up here at the top uh, we need them you know in initialize and uh, and possibly we need them in load content and possibly we need them in update and possibly we need them down in the draw method so if you need a variable to be available throughout the program it has to be declared up here okay there's just no choice um, however if you have a variable that only needs to be used in say the update method then you can declare it in the update method it doesn't really matter where although it's probably just kind of a good practice to declare them up at the top and so I'm going to declare a boolean variable here and you can use either bool or boolean it doesn't matter and a boolean variable is something that can either be true or false and what I want to do is I'm actually going to use uh, I've got some boolean expressions down here that can be true or false and so I'm going to use a couple of boolean variables to hold the values of these expressions so one of these expressions tells me when the start button has been pressed okay so I'm just gonna call this start button is pressed and the other boolean expression down there tells me when the enter key is pressed okay and you will frequently see the word is uh, in the names of boolean variables uh, and now so I've got them declared I can assign them the value true or false okay well this is uh, a boolean expression whose value is going to be either true or false so what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy that and after I read in the gamepad I'm going to put uh, start button is pressed equals and then I'm going to put this boolean expression on the right hand side okay and if both of these are true I've got and in between if both of them are true then the value true is going to get assigned to start button is pressed and if uh, neither one is true or if only one of them is true actually if either one of them is false I guess it'd be a better way to say that if either one is false then the value false gets assigned to the start button is pressed and then I'm gonna do the same thing down here I'm gonna take this and I'm going to do another assignment statement here enter key is pressed equals and then I'm gonna with that boolean expression there okay so I'm reading the gamepad I'm reading the keyboard and then I'm checking the state of these two keys and I'm saving it in this variable and not two keys it's one key but two different times and then I'm reading in the keyboard and down here I'm checking the state of this key on two consecutive ticks of the clock and I'm saving the result in here which means that any place where I use this before now I can simply use this in any place where I used this before now I can simply use this so they're remembering the values of those boolean expressions for me so now what I can write is instead of this big old long thing here I can write if start button is pressed or enter key is pressed then I want to do those two things and then obviously since I've got the same thing here three different places in my program I can take this and I'm going to control V here and replace place it with that simpler statement and then down here I'm going to do the same thing and the program works exactly the way it did before the difference is I've got a couple of extra variables here um, I assign those 
uh, variables, some values here that are the Boolean expressions that I'm interested in for my game state change. And then down here, this if statement suddenly gets a whole lot simpler. And this one gets a lot simpler. And this one gets a lot simpler. And another advantage of that is, you know, in the previous video, we talked about compound Boolean expressions where you have more than two Boolean expressions and you're mixing ands and ors together. Well, this kind of cleaned that up. Um, the most I've got here is here's one Boolean expression with the word and in between and here's another Boolean expression with and in between and down here because I you know I save these in Boolean variables now I don't have this big old long complicated expression plus this is a whole lot easier to read so uh, anytime you can make your program easier to read and easier to understand uh, you're gonna be better off um, the whole trick to um, programming computers is learning how to manage the complexity of the program and trying to find ways to make it as simple as possible and this is one of those tools that you can use to try to make things a little bit simpler so uh, you don't have to do it this way this doesn't add a single thing to the program uh, in terms of the way it works uh, the only difference is in terms of the way it reads and which I think is very important because if your program doesn't work guess what you have to go read it and try to figure out why it doesn't I'm gonna start the program here and we're just gonna verify that it does work exactly the same as it did before Okay, I'm going to press the start button right now. I'm going to press the enter key now. And I'm going to press the start button now. And it works exactly the way it did before. So, um, didn't gain anything in terms of the way the program behaves. But I think we did gain a little bit in terms of the readability of the program. So, that's something you might want to consider when you're um, using compound Boolean expressions, you know like uh, the one we had here where they had four Boolean expressions connected by ands and ors. Um, it's a way to simplify things.